Good morning, Quadcopter 101. And before we get into the flight demonstration, I wanted to show something to you real quick. Um, again, this is the bind and fly version of the Taro. And the, the bind and fly version comes fully assembled. Uh, you don't have to assemble it and all the, the other things that you need to do with the uh, uh, PNP version where you have to build it from a kit. This one comes fully assembled. However, there is an issue that I need to bring up, and you'll see it in the video too, and that is the video um, quality of the video from this. Now, it's very scratchy, and uh, looking at the PNP version that I've seen, the PNP version comes with a 1,000 microfarad uh, capacitor, that you install across these the battery terminals. Now the bind and fly version, which I got, again it comes fully assembled, but does not include that capacitor. But it does include this separator, these separators that they've added to it to give it a little more distance between it and the power distribution board. They, and I think their intent was to reduce the uh, video uh, uh, interference from the motors and from the ESCs, but that didn't doesn't seem to work. <laughs> didn't seem to do the job for my for my particular drone. Um, they removed the capacitor. They were, I guess they were hoping and betting on that these spacers would uh, get rid of that interference, but it doesn't. Um, I would recommend if you do get this bind and fly version, and I do like the bind and fly version in that it comes fully assembled, ready to fly, <laughs> almost ready to fly, but uh, including getting yourself a thousand microfarad capacitor and just uh, solder it between these terminal leaves terminal leads and hopefully that will get rid of the interference. Another thing that I don't like is this Pagoda antenna. I got a feeling this Pagoda antenna also has a lot to do with the video interference that I'm, I'm seeing. So also consider getting a different antenna for your different your, for your particular drum. Okay, let's go into the flight demonstration and let me show you what I'm talking about regarding that interference. So let's fly. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here. What I got for you today is a review of an, actually this is a nifty racer. This one is full featured and it's reasonably priced too for what you're getting here. This is the Taro Q215MM, 215 millimeter in other words. Now, um, TomTop has this listed as a do-it-yourself kit, but that is wrong. It comes fully assembled, folks. This is available both in, uh, this, I got the bind and fly version with the FreeSky XM Plus transmitter. But uh, also it comes with a PMP version where you install your own transmitter. But it is a kit. It is not a kit. I mean, it's fully assembled. And actually, it's actually, uh, if you go into Betaflight, all the switches are set up exactly the way I set them up. I was amazed. You know, it's, uh, I was kind of surprised. But again, it's a fully assembled, uh, full featured uh, racer, full size racer, 215 millimeter. Um, again, I, I got the BNF. Free Sky version with XM Plus transmitter. It has an 800 TVL CCD camera, produces very nice video. Um, it has on screen display with smart audio, so you can change the channels and the frequencies and the, the power levels of your camera using your controller instead of pressing buttons. And you can also uh, adjust the PIDs with the on screen display with this particular one. But again, everything seems to be set up. Um, the way I like it at least. So uh, I think they might actually have tuned the pids. We'll find out actually when we get it in, into the air. I'll tell you how well those pids are working. Now with that camera we also get a 48 channel, 25, 200, 600, and 800 milliwatts switchable FPV transmitter. This is a really nice transmitter here folks. Um, attached, it also comes with a Pagoda antenna uh, out the back here to give you best reception no matter what bank angle or pitch angle that you got on the thing. That's what the idea of the Pakoda is. Um, it also has an Omnibus F4 flight control board loaded up with in beta flight with 3.5.1 and the date on that is September 8th, 2018. So it's a, a relatively new version of the flight control software on board the flight control board. Um, it has BL Hell ES 4-in-1 ESCs uh, for 30 and 40 amps. Uh, 40 amp peak, 30 amp continuous. Now it also has 2206, 2600 kV motors here. And because of these motors, these motors are the limiting factor of, uh, you can only use two to 4S batteries with this, okay? Um, the uh, Everything else seems to be good for up to 6S, but according to the listing, these motors are rated up to 4S batteries. So I wouldn't try anything higher unless you, you feel lucky, <laughs> but we'll see. Um, let's see. Again, this was already set up in Betaflight. When I plugged this into Betaflight, uh, all the switches 
were exactly the way I liked them. I was kind of surprised. So um, hopefully they took some time to adjust the pits for this too, but we'll find out here shortly. So let's go for a flight of this thing and see how it performs. I'm going to start out with line of sight flight, and then we'll switch into Acro FPV. So hope you enjoy this flight. Okay, the front is that direction. We are in angle, arming, and we should be good to go. Now I got a nice breeze here today. That's a five to seven knot breeze, but let's punch it. Oh, it punches very well. Coming back down. One more punch. Bringing it close, closer, closer, closer. Showing it the up front. <laughs> Powerful thing, this little, or this racer quadcopter. So we're gonna land it, and let's go into FPV acro. So hold on, folks. Put it in. Let's put it down on the pad. And this army. And wind's coming from that direction there. So let's point it toward the wind. And I'm going to go get in my chair and we'll go flying. So hold on, folks. Okay, uh, I'm ready to go here. Uh, let's see here. I'm putting these goggles on my head here. I hope. Yeah, yesterday I was trying to fly this and I was not, I just was not impressed at all uh, with the transmission power. And I think it was my antenna was the problem. Uh, one thing I want to show you is the smart audio settings. Uh, to, to activate it, all you do is bring up the throttle to mid position and move it to the left and then your right stick push all the way up and that brings up our menus and you can use the right stick to navigate them. And one of the things is like you can go into features here and then move right on the stick, go down to video transmitter, right on the stick. You can change uh, channels, you can change frequencies, you can change power levels. Uh, go up the, actually I got it set already at 100. But let's go back. I think it's set it. Let's go in here. We'll, we'll try it using this. Power level 100, uh, 200. We'll set it at 200 milliwatts. And then hit set. Confirm. And to change the frequency at the same time. And I am going now to do an auto search using my uh, Viper goggles here. I like these goggles, by the way. And we're waiting, waiting. It's searching, searching, searching. And there, we got the new frequency. So we should be good to go. Again, I got a wind right now, and it's a good wind of about, uh, I'm saying about seven miles per hour, but it's steady. And let me go back and back. There's one other thing I want to show you is profile. In profile, you could actually adjust, you know, adjust your pins out in the field if you want. So that's the other th cool thing about having these smart audio with on-screen display. You can adjust these things out in the field and you know, if you don't like what you got, you can fix it. Okay, so we are, let's put it into acro and arming the motors and take it to the air. First thing I want to check is the signal from my transmitter. It has it improved since yesterday, and yes, it has. <laughs> so if you do use this Pagoda antenna, folks, um, I recommend getting a pagoda antenna, a second pagoda antenna to put on your receiver. Boy, we, boy, that took us out there real fast. Okay, what I want to do is let's try. I'm seeing lots of lines though. I, I don't know if you're seeing that. You should be seeing that too, but a lot of lines from the transmitter. And I got a feeling those are um, being caused by the motors. <laughs> in effect coming around coming around where are we there we are so uh there's something i'm going to try different antennas with this but i don't know this pagoda antenna is the best. <laughs> as you can see here when i give it too much oomph on the antenna it uh it comes scratching so what i'm going to do folks is let's go around here we're gonna fly it until the battery gets lower, but uh, we're gonna try to keep it closer up. Yeah, I'm not gonna be really able to push this too hard with the way I'm seeing this video here. It's still scratched. And I'm gonna cut back on the power that reduces the scratchiness. And when I turn it toward us, it also reduces the scratchiness. Side by, going side by side, it's, it's 
Okay, it's kind of scratchy. So, what can I do? Let's, let's go by slowly and see what happens. Okay, we've got the back end of the drone toward us, side end of the drone as we turn. So I'm, I'm gonna have to try different antennas on this thing. Boy, I'm lovely out here. Fast fly by. Turning. This thing goes way out there real fast. Coming by the other direction. Trying in the other direction. Overhead. Yeah. So it's it's flying well, it's just that this the video on this is needs some work. Video definitely needs some work. <laughs> Probably a different antenna would help. I'm going to try different antennas in the future of this, but it's currently the way it is right now. You, you, can, you guys can see that scratchiness. It's, it's and I don't know. I'm going to call it quits early, actually. We're not going to fly this all the way down. But right now, um, you know, this got all the nice equipment on it, and that's really nice FPV transmitter, so it should be doing this. And I got a feeling that it's being caused uh, by the antenna, the pagoda antenna. That pagoda antenna is not the best. I'm not really a fan of pagodas. <laughs> you know, just a simple linear antenna would have been better. I'll try that in a future flight and see if that helps. So, um, go up one more time and do a one more roll. Roll that way, roll that way, coming around. And do a quick flyby like that. And we're gonna call it quits here shortly. So let me go back to stab mode. Stab. And we're gonna bring it down. Where are we? <laughs> oh my goodness. This thing can fly out real fast and far. Where is it? Oh. <laughs> there you go. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's just bring it down here. This thing gets gets out there real fast. Oops. <laughs> real fast gets out there. Yeah, disarm. <laughs> so my thoughts on this. Everything about it is cool. You know, it's really nice setup, except for one thing, that antenna. <laughs> I got a feeling that antenna is the weak uh, point on this. And that's not a big deal, folks, because you can easily get better antennas that, than that. I'm not a fan of pagodas. <laughs> so uh, that seems to be our problem. I was, it's nice nice control on this drone, very fast. It, it moves out there and instantly. So you got to be careful with this thing. You can easily fly out of range with this thing because it's so fast. But because of that, this antenna there, um, I would recommend considering a different antenna. So again, this is the Taro from, uh, where did I get this? Oh, Talk Top sent me this thing. Uh, the Taro Q215 millimeter. Uh, very nicely equipped drone um, from Taro. So hope you enjoyed this flight. This is Quadcopter 101 signing out. Thank you.